The meeting room was spacious, with large windows letting in plenty of sunlight, but the atmosphere inside was far from light. Standing in the center of the room was Jonathan Hales, a tall, confident, middle-aged man with a touch of gray at his temples, who was used to having his words carry weight. He wore an expensive gray suit, perfectly tailored to his frame, and leather shoes that creaked softly as he paced, shifting his weight relentlessly from one foot to the other. Around ten people sat at a long table, all tense, listening intently to his sharp remarks about the team's future. They knew that Hales never minced words when he was displeased, and today was no exception. The recent supply deliveries, in his opinion, had been subpar, and the team owner was furious. We need to fix this immediately! This season cannot be a failure, and I will not tolerate incompetence! Hales raised his voice, drumming his fingers on the table, as if to emphasize the impact of his words. Everyone present nodded, some quickly jotting down his instructions in their notebooks. No one dared to argue with him. However, Jonathan's hawk-like gaze landed on one person sitting slightly apart from the others. He was a black man, dressed in a simple yet elegant dark suit that wouldn't stand out in a crowd. His calm face betrayed no emotion, despite the growing tension in the room. Hales hadn't noticed him at first. The man wasn't familiar to him. Usually, such meetings were attended by regular partners and known faces, but this person seemed like an outsider. What was he doing here, among those who handled critical aspects of the business? Jonathan couldn't understand why this stranger was present at such an important meeting. Most likely, he was a junior representative from a partner company, just filling an empty seat at the table. This thought irritated Hales. He wasn't accustomed to having people without the proper status or role at his meetings. He continued his speech, his voice laced with barely concealed contempt. We all understand that the team's success depends on professionals who know their craft, he began, indirectly addressing the unfamiliar man. But unfortunately, not everyone can meet our high standards. Hale's words were calculated, but everyone in the room could feel the hostility behind them. They all knew that Jonathan Hales was not the kind of man to hide his disdain for those he deemed out of place. And today, the target was all too obvious. The black man, whom Hales believed could hardly be an important part of the gathering. We cannot afford to work with people who don't grasp the seriousness of the situation, Hales continued, pausing to glance at the man. Frankly, when such large sums of money are at stake, we can't entrust the work to amateurs or those who just happen to be here by chance. The man, at whom these cutting words were directed, showed no reaction. He sat motionless, as if none of this concerned him at all. But the rest of the room felt the tension intensify even further. A few attendees shifted uneasily in their seats, avoiding eye contact with him. Jonathan noticed this and took it as confirmation of his point. No one attempted to interrupt him. Everyone agreed, or at least no one dared to disagree. This only heightened his sense of superiority and control. He was convinced he had the situation well in hand. That's why I've always believed we should rely only on those who can deliver quality work, Hales said, lifting his chin slightly to appear even more authoritative. And if someone can't do that, they shouldn't even try. Each of his words dripped with icy arrogance. He didn't realize how deeply he was sinking into his own prejudices, nor how his words affected those gathered. His speech was not just about business. It was laden with insinuations that some people, in his view, were inherently incapable of handling serious work, especially those like the man in the corner. The black man remained silent. He said nothing, made no move to betray his thoughts. But his gaze stayed focused on Hales, as if observing something familiar, yet still surprising. Silence fell over the room, and a sense of uneasy quiet settled in the air. After finishing his tirade, Hales resumed pacing around the room, confident that he had the situation under control. He felt this was just another one of those meetings where he could assert his leadership, where no one would dare to contradict him. Little did he know that today he had made a mistake that would drastically change the course of events. Jonathan Hales strode around the room like a predator stalking its prey. 
His confidence only grew as no one interrupted or asked difficult questions. He believed he had every right to speak as he pleased since everyone in this room relied on his team and his decisions. The presence of the black man irritated him more and more. A question kept circling in Hales's mind, why was this man even here? With an audible sigh, Jonathan looked again at the man, who still sat calmly at the edge of the long table. It seemed the man wasn't affected by the insults, which only fueled Hale's anger. He didn't like that someone could endure his biting remarks so stoically. We can, of course, tolerate mistakes, but we can't afford the luxury of constant failure, Jonathan continued, deliberately intensifying his tone especially when those failures are due to the incompetence of people who don't understand what professionalism means. I'm sure we all know which cases I'm talking about. His gaze again landed on the black man, whose face remained completely unreadable. The rest of the attendees fidgeted uncomfortably once more, pretending to focus on their notes or averting their eyes. The tension in the room was palpable. Some of them knew Hales could cross the line, but no one wanted to risk their position by stopping him. For them, this meeting was just another day at work, one where they had to endure the boss's arrogance. Meanwhile, Jonathan had no intention of stopping. He decided to continue his attack, this time directly, completely ignoring all semblance of decorum. I've always said that you can't expect much from people who haven't been trained, who aren't used to working in serious conditions. That's why we need to be careful when selecting suppliers. Not everyone can handle such responsibilities, he said pointedly, almost implying that someone like the man in the room didn't belong there. The black man remained silent. His posture, calm and composed, seemed to irritate Hales even more. The man didn't try to defend himself or react to the barbs, making him an even more elusive target for Hales's taunts. He just sat there, listening attentively, without showing any reaction, defying the expectations Hales was accustomed to. The others in the room could sense that the situation had gone too far. The air was thick with discomfort, and many of them were beginning to realize they were witnessing something much more serious than the owner's usual outburst of anger. They knew this wasn't just professional criticism. This was a blatant act of prejudice aimed at someone Hales hadn't even bothered to get to know. Feeling his authority, Jonathan took another step toward the man, intent on provoking some kind of response. He said, I've always believed that trust must be earned, especially when large sums of money are involved. And if someone can't demonstrate the necessary level, they shouldn't even try. You can't rely on those who just aren't up to the task. And there's one group you certainly can't rely on. His voice trailed off, leaving the end of the sentence hanging in the air. The meaning was clear to everyone. The words and tone left no doubt that Hales was making a racially charged insinuation. It was subtle, but everyone in the room understood the real meaning behind his words. The man at the table remained calm. His silence was beginning to draw more and more attention, and despite the blatant insults, he seemed to maintain an extraordinary level of control over his emotions. The rest of the attendees sat in quiet anticipation. They could sense that something was about to happen, something that would change the dynamics of the meeting. Meanwhile, Jonathan was convinced his words had made an indelible impression. He believed he had driven his point home, proven his superiority, and displayed his leadership. But he had no idea just how wrong he was. The room fell into a tense silence, everyone on edge, waiting for what would happen next. And then, finally, the black man, who had maintained his composure throughout, slowly stood up from his seat. His movements were calm and deliberate, instantly drawing the attention of everyone present. The shift in the room was palpable. What came next was something no one could have predicted. I think it's time to clarify something, he began, looking directly at Jonathan. His voice was calm, but there was firmness in it. My name is Michael Jenkins. I own the company that has been supplying your team's equipment for the past five years. The room froze. Hales immediately turned pale. He stood motionless, unable to believe what he had just heard. All his sharp comments and insults directed at this man now seemed even more absurd. 
How could it have happened that he didn't know who stood before him? Michael continued, My team has always provided your team with the best equipment, and that's one of the reasons why you've succeeded on the field. Perhaps you should have paid more attention to who you were working with before making such assumptions. The silence in the room grew more uncomfortable. Hales, who had seemed unshakable just a minute ago, now looked confused and humiliated. Jonathan Hales stood there, stunned, not knowing how to respond. His confidence had evaporated, and his arrogance had vanished in an instant. He struggled to find the right words to justify himself, but nothing came out. Mr. Jenkins, I... I didn't know, he stammered, his voice shaking with embarrassment. Michael Jenkins remained calm. He didn't show anger, nor did he seem offended. His calmness and confidence were almost palpable. He looked at Jonathan with understanding, but also with a certain strictness. Yes, you didn't know because you didn't bother to find out, Michael replied softly but firmly. But the problem is, your words can't be taken back. You insulted me based on assumptions that have nothing to do with my professional abilities or merits. This isn't just a mistake, it's bias. The other meeting participants sat in complete silence, watching as the team owner, who had always been an unyielding leader, was now exposed for his unfairness. Jonathan stood there as if paralyzed, realizing that he had put himself in an awkward and humiliating position. Michael concluded, I've always believed that actions speak louder than words. And today, you've seen how important it is to know the people who make your work possible. We all deserve respect, regardless of the color of our skin. With these words, Michael calmly sat back down, leaving no doubt about who truly held the power in this situation. The room remained engulfed in a deafening silence. Everyone present realized that they had witnessed a significant moment. Jonathan Hales looked defeated, his usual confidence completely gone. It was a lesson he would have to absorb. Slowly sinking into his chair, Jonathan couldn't hide his dismay. He glanced at Michael Jenkins, realizing that his actions had not only called his reputation into question, but also his moral authority to lead. A deep breath seemed to ripple through the room as Jonathan finally spoke. Mr. Jenkins, I was wrong, he said, lowering his voice. I let my prejudices guide my actions. Please accept my apologies. I understand that I not only hurt you, but also discredited myself. Michael, still calm and composed, nodded. He wasn't vengeful, and his measured response only further emphasized his moral superiority. We all make mistakes, he said. What matters is recognizing them and learning from them. I hope that in the future, you'll be more mindful of how you treat the people you work with. This meeting left a deep impression on everyone in the room. Jonathan, exposed and humiliated, realized that his prejudice had nearly ruined his relationship with a key partner who was a crucial part of his team's success. But more importantly, he understood that behind every victory, behind every achievement, there are people and it doesn't matter what color their skin is or what social background they come from.